Happy Feast Day to you. The Feast of St. Margaret Mary is today, and because the church is named for her, it becomes a solemnity, basically a little bit of Christmas just this very minute. If you notice, the statue of St. Margaret Mary uh, for her feast day is, is in the sanctuary. Um, from a distance, they all kind of look the same. One child came up to me and said, what are those four logs on the wall? I said, oh my. I said, move closer. He said, well, we know my family sits in the back. I said, well, you can come up, come up closer. When we gather to honor someone that has helped us, we think about someone in heaven, our patron, in this case, St. Margaret Mary, who from her place in heaven guides us still, guides us as a parish, especially in these times of transition. It's fascinating to see uh, the reaction to the change in the mass schedule. Uh, it's very upsetting for people because it's a shock to your Sunday morning culture. Um, the schedule is about, I gather, as long as I can tell, they threw all the bulletins out, uh, at least about 30 years. So to change that is, is jarring for people. But it's not done just to be jarring. It's not change for the sake of change. But rather, it's part of um, trying to accommodate the fact that everybody wants to say, take my mass and just keep it the same. It's, it's very difficult to do that. We don't have enough people to staff, meaning priests and indeed musicians. Uh, the organ school at many music schools has closed because uh, people aren't attracted to becoming church musicians. So we're fortunate to have uh, a new music director, uh, Michael Zappala, uh, who's both a believer and a very talented man. Um, and we're blessed to have that, and to share those talents between the two parishes. Of course, our goal is to merge into one parish. And just as a confirmation, you took a name, just as when a new pope is elected, he takes a name, so too uh, the churches are different from the parish. Uh, the parish is a corporation in the state of Connecticut. It's the way it's set up. It's different in every state. Uh, but each corporation has a name. So as you see, we have an, an opening over here for where the statue of Margaret Mary used to be. Um, I offer to you to make to me a recommendation, which I make to the archbishop, to choose a name for the new corporation. The church has retained the patrons that they have. There'll always be a St. Francis Church. There'll always be a St. Margaret Mary Church. But what do we call the new corporation, the new parish entity. The buildings keep their names, but the parish deserves a new name. We need an experience of us, because frankly, I'm becoming bipolar. It's <laughs> going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back. It's exhausting. Father Carlos said to me the other day, you know, every week I come and say, who are these people? I met them about two weeks ago. And when I come here, I, I have to confess, I miss you. I'm used to you. And I go over there like, oh yeah, mm, I don't know. <laughs> it drives me crazy. My hope is that by consolidating the masses, in addition to preserving the health and the sanity of the two priests and the staff, is to get experience of, okay, I see more people in the same place. All the masses are kind of scattered except for, the, of course, the vigil mass, which is, um, which is filled around the homily. Uh, and then Peter's off quickly after communion. It's one of those things uh, that we have better liturgy instead of more liturgy, instead of nine masses, less masses. So I asked you to consider what should we name that new parish entity? Um, we need an experience of an us, because right now, I, frankly, I'm really sick and tired of us and them and, and the nasty things that people say, which is crazy, because you have one high school and as I recall, one faith, one baptism. So we kind of have to uh, move along. Uh, I know some people uh, say, well, we're older. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> and then the other people say, we're bigger. That's nice. <laughs> and then I remind them, and we're Christian. Stay out of this, Father. <laughs> um, I've invited several people have written me letters, wonderful letters, and uh, I appreciate that, uh, the candor of those letters. Uh, but I also know that if I go incognito, undercover to Dunkin' Donuts, I hear a lot more response. I sit in the back and I listen to the stuff going on. I'm like, this is, this is really something. But I never said it would be dull having me as pastor. And I knew there was something in God's providence that, that put me here, because I think it was the Holy Spirit. The other day I said to my mother, Ma, by the, you know, confirmation is coming up in the parish. What confirmation name did you take? And she said, oh, that was a long time ago. Well, not really, I'm very young. I said, yeah, Ma, go on. And she said, oh, it was Margaret Mary. 
So I said, oh, oh. I said, Dad, what was, what was your confirmation name? Francis of Assisi. I, you know, there's no such thing as a coincidence. But we need an experience of us. Um, last night at the vigil mass, I, I floated during the daily mass and there was no reaction. No reaction, I was over St. Francis. But last night at the vigil mass, you could tell where people went to college. It was the funniest thing. Oh, we, we should name it uh, St. Ignatius. I went to Fordham. Okay, that's a good suggestion. No, we should name it. Um, um, they went through this whole list of things. And Father, um, Father Carlos said, well, we should name it St. Charles Arthur. I said, listen, Carlos Arturo, we're not naming it after you. <laughs> he said, I tried. <laughs> um, we look at the first reading. And there's the image of Moses stretching his hands out. Now in the Old Testament, to stretch your hand out like this was when you gave a command, like go do this and go to that. But to do this is to pray. Uh, you see when the priest stretches his hands out. But you notice that people had to help him hold up his hands. And it's a perfect reading for us because we have two parishes to pray. We need each other. We may not think we need each other, and we may want people to stay on that side. But this is not the blue versus the gray, the north versus the south, or Yankees Red Sox. Well, maybe it might be. I think the dividing line is somewhere in the middle of town. Instead, it's uh, people who share a faith to build up together. We've been uh, very fortunate all around us. All the churches have already been restructured, and we've kind of um, been able to sit tight and enjoy uh, what has always been. But then to move forward in faith together is an opportunity and an adventure. And like any family, it's not dull. With sincerity of heart, with respect for God's gifts, we participate in heavenly things, no matter when the Mass is. When you're on vacation and you go to masstimes.org, you seek out a time to go celebrate. If you're in a foreign country, you sit there and go through the entire Mass saying, I don't know where they are, I know what they're saying, and then you recognize something. They ring the bells, they elevate the Blessed Sacrament, they hold up the chalice, and you say, I know, I'm home. I'm part of a wider family. Last year, the Episcopalian Church lost 3% of its membership overall. It's doing a, a complete nosedive. And we have to be aware of the fact that attendance has gone down. We all have family members that don't come to church except um, for rites of passage, weddings, baptisms, funerals. And they like it. They have a cultural identity as a Catholic, but they don't experience what you experience. When someone comes into a half-empty church, it's kind of depressing. Maybe we've grown accustomed to it, say, no, I like my pew, stay away from me. You know, this is New England, the frozen chosen. But we really do need to see that enthusiasm that we have at Christmas and at Easter. People want to know Jesus Christ, and they meet Jesus through you. You have to be nourished. You have to be fed. In order to do that, you have to have priests that are prepared to do that. Yesterday, I had two weddings and a funeral, which is like a movie. Um, and to ship that quickly between emotions is very difficult. So by the vigil mass, I had nothing, nothing to give. And just my luck, who's sitting on the side? I didn't see him over here. There were three seminarians saying, did that wrong, did that wrong. That was a terrible homily, that was awful. I hate seminarians. Ooh, did I say that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the nice thing is that two seminarians are from this parish, and that's a credit to you, to your faith. One studying for the Diocese of Norwich and one for the Archdiocese of Hartford. And that's just this year, and that's because of you, because of your faith, because you're good and holy people, and they have experienced Jesus in you. And I also think because of the prayers of St. Margaret Mary. As we move forward, we don't need to have a fierce battle between the Amalekites and the Israelites, no. These are brothers and sisters in faith. We move forward in faith. Yes, it can be difficult to adjust, but we're trying to do something good here. We're trying to go through a process whereby we come together. If we did everything the way we wanted to, we'd all be alone, and that's American culture, individualistic. And we see where the country has so many difficulties because you have 300 plus million sets of opinions. 
but we're concerned about the common wheel, the common good, the greater good, the community. As you contemplate the name for a new entity, uh, for a new us, yes, we always retain the name of the church and certainly the intercession of St. Margaret Mary. We also move forward because we need help. We can't do it alone. We need to have our arms held up like Moses so that we too can pray together. <laughs>